When you think of Z, it reminds you of a very iconic name in the sports car brand. 240Z, 300ZX, 350Z and 370Z. Now, they have their latest iteration of the Z sports car and Nissan has decided to call it only the Z. The technical name was called the 400Z but when they actually launched it, they removed the numbers. So then, it's only called the Z. Welcome everybody to this iconic sports car and let's see how this rear wheel drive 400 bhp sports car is. The front end of the Z looks very good. It has lots of retro touches. Honestly, it brings back the years. A major throwback if you ask me. It's got nice lights with DRLs embedded in them and it looks very good. You've got a very, very big air dam in the middle, which is literally the main highlight of the front. Everything else is very minimalistic. You've got some cuts and creases on the bottom part of the bumper, but that's about it. A very big Nissan badge, obviously. It's not in chrome, it's a very matte gray finish with the emblem. And I guess the emblem would look better with other colors because this car is available in a lot of striking colors. The launch color was like a lime yellow sort of neon color, which I personally like a lot. There's also very bright blue, which again looks very good. This shade is not my most favorite, but now it's grown on me. And now I've seen it in, you know, sun, rain, cloud. I think this is a color that works on a day-to-day -day basis because it hides dirt very well. In fact, this car is very dirty right now, but it's not visible on camera because the color does all the party tricks. When you come to the side of the Z is when you realize that this is a true and blue two-door coupe sports car. It's got the classic silhouette. Again, it's a mild evolution, I would say, of the 370Z with the thick C pillars and the rear wide arches, which again, look really good. But be careful when you park them because the rear wide arches, you might misjudge them when you park in tight spaces. You've got this fabulous looking 19 inch wheels and you've got red calipers, which look really good. It contrasts with this paint really well. What can I say? This sloping roof line and everything, and this also does have the optional dual tone roof. So this blacked out roof is an option. It's about 300 or $400. With this paint, it looks really good. Honestly, I think it's an option that's been well selected for this car. And overall, the side profile just looks very iconic, very true to the sports car theme. When you come to the rear from the sloping C-pillar and the Z-badge, which definitely brings back a lot of the years. In fact, I think that was found last on the 240Z. And there are more 240Z elements when you come to the rear. The tail lights is one of the biggest tributes I feel to the older 240Z. It looks really good with some LED elements to make it look modern and up to date with current times. It's one of the best design elements. In fact, I like the rear more than the front and I can't say that too much for too many cars. You've got a splitter sort of look in the bottom, which looks very good. It's gloss black, so it can get dirty. And you also have a small lip spoiler, which I personally would have liked in a contrasting color, maybe in black. On a brighter color, it would have looked better, but this looks very good. A black plaque that says Z and the Nissan badge. Again, it just looks very good. Reminds you of the older times, the sports cars, the sport back look. I personally like the way Nissan has designed this whole car. They stuck true to the original retro theme they set out to be with this car. I'm now inside the Z and you can see it's a very very bright color. A big contrast to the exterior which is a very normal grey. The blue is an option. You do have an option of black or blue. So this press car has the blue. And I didn't like it at first to be very honest with you. But now it's definitely grown on me. Because the blue and the black inside and the grey bits, I think that's a good combination. You've got a lot of blue leather on the dash, but the seats have leather and Alcantara. You do have Alcantara on the door as well, which is a very nice feel. Overall, it feels very soft. You can rest your arms. You can rest your arm on this armrest as well, which is very nice. And you just slide so you can move it forward for your arm. But then you do cover a cup holder. So you have one cup holder and if you slide it back, it gets you access to the other cup holder as well. This does open for a small storage and you do have some buttons here. So this is for the heated seats. This is to open the boot and you have buttons on the side of the steering wheel or oh, sorry, of the side of the seat. Uh, to adjust the seat, which is a very unusual place, but it's a tribute to the older Zs. I think the 350Z and the 370Z as well have it here on the side of the seat. You do have rotary knobs for the AC, but you have do, do have auto AC and stuff like that you can just play around. The knobs feel very tactile, they feel very, very good. You do have a basic touchscreen which has CarPlay, Android Auto, all the settings you could do. So it's very, it's just adequate, which is nice. And the resolution is pretty nice as well. But it's a very standard Nissan unit, which you would find in other Nissan, the SUVs as well. You do have three here pods here with a boost speed, boost, boost pressure, and the volt battery volt, which is very nice. And again, 
it's a major throwback to the 350z and the 370z it's just been a z thing and i like the way nissan has stuck to the core z theme and they have made it modern but yet retain the core strengths and i love these gorgeous when you're driving it's just so nice to look you actually don't need to look at it when you're driving on a day-to-day -day basis i mean what would you do by knowing your turbo psi while cruising the highway but again it's a nice to have and it's very nice to look at it's very clear and at night it looks very good you do have a very modern screen here which is the speedometer cluster which again you have a variety so you have normal sport and you have the proper track one so i like the one in the track one because it has the rpm meter right in front of you with the z logo and it looks very good but this track mode also loses information like trip meter and fuel economy but when you're driving a sports car, do you really need fuel economy? I don't think so. You're clearly in the wrong car then. The steering feels very nice. Well, it's a bit big for my liking, but it feels good. The paddles feel very nice. Uh, they have a nice click, but the feel itself, the paddle, I feel it could have been a bit nice with the aluminium finish. So this could have been a bit better. And again, the typical Z look. You've got the same door handles and the AC vent on the door, which is again a throwback to the 350Z and the 370Z. What can I say? You know, many sports cars are highly impractical in the inside but this is very practical lots of space for two people and you do not have rear seats so you have an access to some cubby in the back and then you have an access to the big boot which i feel how it should be done don't force four seats into a sports car it just ruins everything keep it like the z two seats with big space i'm not behind the wheel of the z so let's get the numbers out of the way this has a three liter turbocharged petrol engine produces 400 bhp rear wheel drive has an lsd has an optional six speed manual this has the 9-speed automatic though, it's a torque converter and the engine is very peppy, there's some turbo lag below 2000 rpm but otherwise it's pretty peppy and it sounds pretty good, it sounds just like our Nissan V6 sounds this is not a VQ because the VQ are the naturally aspirated series of engines, this is the VR30 so it shares the same engine with the Infiniti Q50S, the sedan which is again a very competent product in itself this again it's very very fun i have it in manual mode you can put it in drive and just cruise and you'll notice that the gearbox is very conservative it wants to go into the highest gear as quickly as possible to get as much fuel economy and reduce the noise harshness and vibration but ideally this car should be driven in manual mode and put the drive mode so there are two drive modes in standard and sport put it to sport and the gearbox is much more eager the engine is much more eager the mapping i think slightly changes and when you have in paddles, you can easily just play through the gears and you can hear the engine becomes a little nicer as well. I feel like the valves open on the exhaust. It just sounds so good. Oh, it sounds good. It sounds just like how a Nissan V6 is and it's got a lot of poke. And it pulls very, very strongly all the way to redline. You know, normally turbo engines lose some steam towards the redline because they're not built to redline all that much. This is a very, very good motor that Nissan has built. Honestly, I didn't expect to like this motor as much. It's so nice. It's got just the right amount of torque. Oh, and you, when you push it through some corners, the chassis is also very, very nice. The steering feel is precise and it's just perfectly weighted. So you exactly know what the wheels are doing. The feedback is spot on. Body roll is a bit there and also be careful. The rear is very, very twitchy, especially mid corner, any any sort of input of throttle and the rear will slide even with traction control on i solely blame that to the tires that this car comes with from factory the bridgestone potenzas i wish this had you know michelin pilot sports or something because i feel like any car over 300 bhp should definitely have that from factory oh, oh yep 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 the rear just slid there as i said any sort of throttle input mid corner and the rear just wants to slide Oh, it's a bit of a handful, but once you learn the master of the trade, I think it's extremely rewarding as well. The brakes are really good, the pedal feel is spot on, the brake pedal bite is superb, you know just to, when to stop, stops on a dime. Driving dynamics is perfect, even the ride is very good, I've been driving this car on some very broken surfaces as well, and I did not expect this car to ride so well. Honestly, Nissan has perfectly tuned the suspension, the engine, the gearbox would have been a bit more aggressive, a bit more fun but you can counter it by putting the sport in manual and taking things your own way and you do counter some of the laziness of the gearbox as well. Oh, Wow, just look at that, just look at that, it just, two paddles down, two D gears down and it just flies like a rocket. Great car by Nissan, honestly I did not expect to have so much fun over the week with this car. This one will be one tough car to give back.
In conclusion then, the 2023 Nissan Z. Well, I'm a personally a big fan of two-door sports cars, rear-wheel drive with decent amount of power. 400 bhp is more than enough for your day-to-day -day driving. I like the way this car looks, I like the way this car drives, it handles really well. Space is pretty good for two with a big boot. I like the way they don't go for a forced four-seater outlook. Again. Nissan has stuck through to the elements of what makes a true sports car and they have a manual option as well which is again a bonus for the enthusiast. At around $62,000 to $65,000 for this Z with some options, it's really not a bad deal provided you can find one at the price I mentioned because dealers have been a bit greedy if I may say. But again, I've been really enjoying my time with this car and I think I'm going to just enjoy for this one last drive.